On this St. Patrick's Day, we'll show you a clever way that hackers can bypass the security of a wireless network and break in no matter what type of encryption the target's using. Now, typically, if you're looking to hack into a wireless network, you need to look at the type of encryption that the target is using. A WEP type network has not been secure for quite some time and can generally be broken into in a matter of minutes. The same is true for a WPA network that uses a bad password, but if you use a strong password, it's relatively secure, except for the WPS setup pin. Now that is actually a hardware-based vulnerability that a lot of routers have that allow you to get the pin that provides you complete access to the router in case you ever forget uh, the, the password that you set on it. This is usually an eight-digit number printed on the bottom of a router, but we can derive this number simply by running a tool called Ergeddon coming up next. Attacking the WPS setup pin is an efficient way of going after a wireless network because we're able to completely bypass whatever security the user may have implemented. Now, what is the WPS setup pin supposed to accomplish? Well, typically, on the bottom of most routers, there's an eight-digit number that's printed that's supposed to allow you access to the router credentials if you ever forget them. Now, if this was an eight-digit number that was uh, basically validated all by itself, that would mean we would need to brute force the entire thing in order to guess the password. Now that's not very practical, but unfortunately, the way most routers implement this is by breaking the number into two different sections and validating them independently. Now that means it's possible to brute force each half, and that's not good, because tools like Reaver are able to brute force these pins and get complete access to a router in anywhere between sometimes as lucky as an hour, but more common between four and seven hours if you're near a wireless network and consistently connected. Now, a lot of people thought this was really cool, and as a result, the manufacturers of the wireless network uh, routers have begun to implement certain protections, which makes this attack not very practical anymore. In fact, you may find that you only get one or two exchanges with a router before it completely locks you out or limits the amount of messages you can send. Now, it's okay, because there was another security vulnerability found that enables something called the pixie dust attack which we'll use uh, implementing a tool called Bully later on. Now, this attack works because we can use a single exchange to guess the WPS setup pin based on the way that the router sets random numbers. Now, a number of routers do this in a really weak way. Some of them use just a zero, a null, to uh, start the initial seed, and some of them use just the timestamp at the beginning of the WPS transaction. Now, because we know the function that these routers use to generate a random number, by knowing the random seed at the beginning, we're able to guess the WPS setup pin in just a single exchange. Now, what that translates to is the ability to break into a router in just sometimes a fraction of a second. So in order to do this, we'll need a wireless network adapter capable of uh, packet injection and wireless monitor mode, such as this PAU09 or another wireless card that supports those modes. You'll also need Kali Linux, and after that, we'll be using a tool called uh, Airgeddon, which is a wireless attack framework that includes Bully that will allow us to target the network and provide other kind of automated things that normally we would need to do manually. So, pretty simple. Let's get started. First, as always, we'll need to make sure that our Kali Linux distribution is up to date. We can do this by typing apt get update. Now, if you haven't already installed Airgeddon, it might not be installed on the default Kali repo. Although if you're using a uh, Parrot security OS, it should be installed by default. Now, if you don't have it installed, just go to the GitHub repo and you'll need to click on the clone or download button which will give you the link you'll need to copy. Here you can see it, and we'll take this, copy it, and then drop it into the command git clone, and then the link to the GitHub repo. Now, when we do that, we'll see that there's already something there, so we won't bother to do that, but get rid of Firefox 2. Our next command will be to change directory into the Ergeddon repository, so cd Ergeddon, and then ls to see the files inside. So here we can see our target file, which is ergeddon.sh. So we will just type sudo bash ergeddon.sh. 
Now this will launch and do a quick check to make sure that we have all the necessary files and, de and uh, dependencies in order to successfully run the various tools contained in Ergedin. So your first time, a couple of these tools in the second section may have a red uh, mark next to them instead of green. This means that you need to type apt get install and then the name of the tool it says it's missing in another terminal window in order to install it. Now, sometimes these tools might be named a little differently. Uh, sometimes there are also suggestions right after the red part. It'll say maybe named something different. Try running these commands and generally this will solve any dependency issues you have. Now, once you have all these things taken care of and the whole thing is green, go ahead and press enter to go to the next step. So the script will make sure that it's most current, uh, it is at its most current version. And once that's confirmed, you'll select the wireless card. In this case, we want the dual band number three which is WLAN 1, and that will allow us to scan both in 2.4 and 5 gigahertz. So the first step will be to put our card into monitor mode, which is option two. Once we run that, we'll be able to start scanning around and trying to find different networks near us. So the next command we'll run is to select the WPS attacks menu, which is option eight. Once inside, we'll see the option for exploring for targets. So we'll select option four to start looking around. Now here we'll need to decide between 2.4 and 5 gigahertz. In this case, for now, I'll search on 2.4, but we can also press Y in order to scan on the 5 gigahertz band. So when we press return, we'll be able to see a window pop up and it'll start populating with targets that are nearby uh, and as soon as we see the one we're looking for, we can press Control c or exit out of the window. So I'll let that run for just a bit. Cool. So now we'll exit out of the window, and we'll see this list of networks that are in range. Now I recognize our test network as number 26, so we'll type that, and it will copy the target profile information into the attack window. Now, as we can see at the top, the information from that particular network has been loaded, so we can go to option number seven, which is to launch a pixie dust attack. Now, this can either be one part or two parts, depending on the reception, and whether or not we're able to use the pin that we crack to immediately get the credentials. Hopefully, this will work in one go, but we might be able to simply crack the pin and then use another tool to get the pin once uh, to get the credentials once we have the pin figured out. So now we'll set the timeout period, and this is the amount of time that it'll take before it assumes that the attack has failed. We'll set this to 55 seconds. With that in place, we're ready to launch our attack. So go ahead and press return and monitor the window that pops up. Now what you'll want to see is a whole lot of activity between the two base stations because some of these attacks are based on the timestamp. So if you can get all of the different required communications to happen in the same second, it allows you to crack the uh, pin outright. So again, some of this is just about timing and being able to get the correct sequence from the router. And generally the closer you are, the better it will be. So here we can see that we've actually found the pin and if we can't get a response from the router within uh, the set period, we might need to use a second tool, but we've actually already cracked the pin, so technically this network is ours. Now, this is important because you cannot change this pin. This router will be mine for all of time until this person actually goes and buys a new one. So even if they choose to change their password to something really secure or something totally unknown, I will always be able to retrieve it with this pin. That's a pretty serious problem because if somebody were to use another traditional method of brute forcing, they might get your password, but the second you change it, they're back to square one. This, as you can see, this pin right here is a different case because it basically allows us to get into this router whenever we want. So let's open another terminal window and copy this, this pin down that we've cracked. Once we have that eight digit number, We'll copy it and we'll use the Reaver custom pin association tool to plug that in and get the credentials from the router. Press enter and let's also exit out of this window. So this will land us back on the main Ergedin attack page for WPS. 
So now that we know the pin, we'll do the number six Reaver custom pin association. So this is where we'll need to, oops, sometimes it leads you back and you'll have to hit six a second time. There we go. So let's type the custom pin here and set the timeout period for 55 seconds. And once that's all set, we'll be ready to use the pin we just got to dump the credentials for this particular router. There we go. As you can see, we were able to crack this in 36 seconds. Uh, and that is actually mostly because of the communication with the router. If we were closer to our test target, that would have actually taken a lot less time. But as you can see, when we finally were able to communicate with it, it just gave up the credentials right here. So below, you can see a WPA passphrase and uh, the SSID of the ID. You can also see uh, of the AP. Uh, you can also see the WPS setup pin right here. With this information, we have complete and total control of the router, both from the firmware angle where we can log into the WPS uh, account and reset everything, and from you know the password angle where we can log in just with a normal password and look like any other wireless user. Now this gives us an unusual amount of control over our target because typically just cracking a password would mean we would still need additional information to get into the router settings. Now this isn't the case if we get the WPS setup pin, so it's important to know that this attack can leave you extra vulnerable if you ignore it. This is a perfect example of how serious this kind of attack can be. And while older hardware is typically more vulnerable to it, you can see this newer router was also vulnerable and fell in less than a minute. Now again, this can happen much faster if you're in closer range, so know that this password attack can really speed up the rate at which a router can be compromised. As you can see, it didn't take long to break into that wireless network, even though it was using WPA and it was a recently issued router from a local internet service provider. This means that even more recent routers might be vulnerable to this sort of attack, so you should be sure to disable WPS whenever you see the option. Now, it's also worth noting that this kind of attack can be very effective if you're in an area with a lot of old hardware, so keep that in mind as well. Now, if, speaking of old hardware, if you've disabled WPS on a device and it, it's a little bit older, you might want to make sure by actually running this tool against it that it's actually disabled, because it's pretty common that older routers will say they've disabled WPS, but actually still be vulnerable to this sort of attack. We hope that you're enjoying your St. Patrick's Day and that you enjoyed this episode of Cyber Weapons Lab. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe, and we will see you next time.